Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Royal Clutch, the N80. And from what I read, this has a lot of interesting upgrades that people should be excited about. As far as Royal Clutch goes, they have been improving their game as of late. They've released some QMK versions of their old Star Wars standards like the RK61 and their new one, the RKM65, I believe. Um, but this one is not only gasket mounted, from what I understand, I believe it has a PC plate and has a circular display. It is the RKN80. This one right here, we have a pearly dawn color and we're loaded with brown switches. And the key layout is IBM 80K, <laughs> okay? It's it's a 75% with a knob, but we've only got three keys on the column right here. So Royal Kludge did send this out to me for review, and it is available in two colors. And if you're just watching this now, uh, when I publish this review, I will also be hosting a giveaway of two of these units over on Budget Key. So if you're seeing this right now, go to budgetkeebs.com, which will forward you to the Reddit sub. And you can also enter the giveaway. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the end. All right, before we get into the keyboard, let's see what we have in the box. We have a pretty big um, uh, user card, user guide manual. But it they have definitely worked on their support. Having had Royal Kludge keyboards for about as long as I've been in the hobby, uh, their support has improved a thousandfold. From when I first got it, we got a nice big user manual, and it does come with a 12 month warranty. And we have a nice big, um, so basically a poster you can just hang up on your wall. Like, hey, here's all the features. Oh, it even tells you everything that it comes with. It did my job for me. Keyboard. <laughs> All right, so along with that user manual, we have four extra. Oh, this is a low profile. Hey, I knew there was another thing about this keyboard I was forgetting. So this is a low profile and it has, I don't know what these standards are. I have like three or four different um, low profile switches and they all seem to have different pinouts. Well, besides, uh, some extra switches, which is always nice to include. They do have a pick, and that would be probably for opening up the case. We have a standard USB-C to USB-C cable with a USB-C to USB-A adapter that's connected with a tail, which is always appreciated. And we have your standard wire switch and keycap puller. And here we are with the RKN80. As you can see, it does have a dust cover that is shaped to form. And we do have a low profile keyboard. And it actually has a very nice profile in my opinion. I like that they've made the logo a little bit smaller. Um, these keycaps are almost like a low profile XDA as they seem pretty uniform going all the way across. have a very nice wheel that feels like an aluminum um, edge don't seem to have a screen protector on here but you can still push on it and you can turn it the screen itself doesn't turn the um, knob is kind of more on the outside so the screen stays still now, this one is in one of two colorways, I do believe. We do have a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Looks like we actually even have a pass-through port when we're hooked up to USB. All right, let's turn it on. And, oh, that's a pretty good, good loading logo there. All right, so we can control volume. And then we can control modes. And I do believe that we can also upload um, animated GIFs to it, but we'll have to take a look here in a little bit when we take a look at the software. Looks like we have RGB background. And let's see. 
We do have top double shot keycaps. I would, they feel like PVT to me. And even though they're low profile, we have 1.3 millimeters, which is not bad at all for the thickness of the keycaps, considering how little they are. Little they are. And it doesn't sound half bad for a low profile with um, stock switches. All right, I must be confusing this keyboard with another one. This does not have a PC plate. It does have a steel plate, and it appears to be tray mounted. So, but it is a low profile keyboard. Unfortunately, on low profiles, there isn't much room even for um, putting in a gasket mount. Not that it can't be done, because I know it is. it has been done, but it's just not standard as of yet we also do have two pairs of feet so we can get three different typing angles the stabilizers are well lubed and very well attached now this is a hot swap but We can see we have a little bit of foam right below. We have north facing LEDs. And we have those two pins right next to each other. We also have the uh, side post. But um, like I said, I don't know how many standards of low profile switches they can put out. I did just see a um, a 3D printable switch opener for low profile switches and I've been meaning I need to get my 3D printer up and going again so I can print it out and see how well that does because for those who have low profile keyboards and they want to lose those switches um, opening up low profile switches can be a big pain and it's easy to break them I've been using tweezers to do it um, and I've only done one board entirely because it was that much of a pain and I broke, I want to say like, probably three or four switches totally. And had, but I was able to use some parts for some of the other ones and kind of make up for some of the switches I broke. But anyway, um, this has the, um, I want to say it's called Silver Dawn colorway or Silver Robot, Silver Robot Dawn. Ah. Shine down? I can't remember, but I've seen this colorway before. I actually have a couple of keycap sets with this uh, same colorway. And we've got some pretty good legends. They are centered. Um, they are not shine through. And like I said, I do believe they're PB PBT, but I'll have to check um, and confirm that when I get to the, to the spec section. Um, and it has a nice uniform profile. And it does have a nice feel, even though, I don't know why on a low profile keyboard, it's almost like my hands are like, let's be more gentle since there's not as much travel, much travel. But I like how this one is situated. We've got a fully RGB low profile with a display. I, I want to say this is the first low profile with a display that I've reviewed. I believe it is. Um, because the other low profiles I've reviewed, let me see. Yeah, no, this is the first one with the display that I, that I can honestly think of right now. Yeah, despite um, it being a steel plate, I don't hear any ring or ping. And not as harsh as a steel plate usually is and I'm trying to figure out why it's yeah it actually seems to have a little bit of give all right so it looks like we have caps lock scroll lock mode USB windows speaker and how we're connected 
as well as our battery power and the date, which is almost right. Now, let me be frank. I know that displays on a keyboard are more of an aesthetic thing, but I do like it, especially when it has the clock. I have clocks everywhere, but I still like, you know, oh, I'm going to look down on the keyboard. Oh, I know what time it is. Um, I don't know what it is, but just having the time around me helps me to stay in touch with where I'm, where, what part in the day I'm at and what I need to get done before it's, you know, time to eat and rest and relax time. So I like it, but I also like that it's multifunctional. So if I wanted to, I could just turn it to a, anything that, you know, if I'm in an anime mood, I could put, load up a Robotech logo on there. If I'm in a geek mood, I could load up an animated arch logo on there. If depending on my mood, I can load up different things. I can customize it. I can personalize the keyboard to my likings. Now, I've pretty much always leaned towards keyboards with a knob. And if it doesn't have a knob, then I use a numpad with a knob because I like the ability to just press and mute right away. Um, so the fact that this has both a knob and a display in a very, I mean, I gotta say it, it's classy the way that it's done here. I love the ridges on it. I, I just love the way that it looks, the way that it's been incorporated. Um, I do kind of wish they would have added one more key down there, but it's really not the end of the world for me. Um, I don't know why they left that blank without like a spot for a badge or something. But it's still a good enough layout where I could use it. I would map the under layer of delete to insert this to home and end. And I've pretty much got the keys that I need to work with. Um, so this is actually something that I could, even though, I mean, it, for a low profile, it's actually quite hefty. I mean, it feels... It feels very solid. It has very little flex whatsoever. It feels much sturdier than even some of those aluminum body um, low profiles, like the one from Nufi. I mean, when I have Nufi, don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but I mean, all I got to do, and I have a condition that basically robs me of the strength in my hands, but um, I can take that one and literally i know i could twist it to where i'd basically break the pcb whereas this one i using all the force that i can muster i can barely get it to budge there's no creaking noise it doesn't feel like it's going to give way any second whereas like i said with the the new few keyboards i almost feel like i can I, I i could break the pcb inside of it by just continuing to bend the aluminum because it's so soft but with this one, I actually feel like not only do I have a nice looking low profile that I could take on the on the road with me. It could be my road warrior. It's uh, it's going to fit in my bag. It's going to be nice and sturdy so it doesn't move around, but it's not going to be so heavy as to where, you know, I'm going to feel it in my backpack as soon as I add it. Um, this honestly feels about as heavy maybe slightly bit lighter than um, than the laptop that I mostly use. It really is that, you know, substantial, but like I said, it's not, it doesn't weigh more than a laptop. So adding this to my bag is not going to be a problem. So, um, yeah, I got to say, yeah, I got to say, this may be personally my favorite low profile that I've seen to date. Even though, yes, it has a steel plate, like I said, it doesn't, it has a little bit of give, and I don't know where it's coming from. I almost want to open it up, but I'm going to leave that for another video where I will probably uh, either lube the switches or switch out the switches if I can find switches that actually fit this particular um, pin layout. But I could use this as is. I really, really could. I am... Um, It's a brown, so it I mean, 
it hardly has a tactile bump, but it has it, and it's there. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. Now, there's not much room for it to sound much better in there, because it is a low profile. But, like I said, when I come back to this, uh, I'm interested to see if I can add a little bit more pop, more life to it. But, I, I definitely... I, I think this is going to be my new Road Warrior keyboard. I like it that much. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Royal Kludge N80. A new low profile 3 mode 75% top mount with a knob that is also a display. It is built with a top mount steel plate. Is available in both a dune red and sandy gray color with either brown or red low profile jersey switches. It has a customizable knob display which allows you to upload custom animations and the software includes the functionality for per key RGB, one function layer, one tap layer as well as macros. This keyboard also includes one USB-C pass-through for when in wired mode. It also has a pocket for the 2.4 GHz dongle. It is preloaded with ABS double shot low profile keycaps. The weight of this keyboard is 890 grams while the battery comes with a 3750 milliamp capacity. The chin of this keyboard sits at 13.5 millimeters, while the back sits at 23.5, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. Flipping out the first set of fold down feet will take the back height to 27.5 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 8 degrees. Folding down the final set of feet will take this keyboard to a 33.5 height on the back with an 11 degree typing angle. This keyboard is currently on sale on Royal Kledge Gaming Store for $89.99. So it appears that Royal Kledge, at least for this keyboard, they're updating their software. Now it is a closed source software that I have seen before, but in my opinion it's one of the better software packages as it does include both a, an actual function layer as well as profiles. It also has a tap layer. Now, a tap, for those of you that, you, if you don't know, you can basically just make it to where one key will work as a particular key if you just quickly tap it. If you press and hold for more than, I think that you can set the timing. Uh, well, you can, I know you can enable it on some of those. You can set the timing. But usually it's like, you know, if it's less than 200 milliseconds, then it'll activate but if you press and hold for more than 250, say, then it'll be the default key. But if you just tap it, then it's going to do that, whatever you programmed or remapped onto that tap layer. So it does have that functionality. It also has the functionality for per key RGB. And it does have a pretty um, complete suite for macros, including repeats, timing, all of that stuff. Um, the screen uploader is also integrated integrated into the software package and while it is pretty good i like that you can actually move around the scene if for some reason the image is bigger or the gif is bigger than the screen can handle um but it takes a pretty long time to upload i mean i i uh took a uh, a video that is just basically a 3D animated eyeball and turn it into a GIF. And I had to bring it down to, I think, 360 by 240 for it to fit just right inside of that circle. Now there's a flat edge down at the bottom. But I gotta say, I like, I really like it. Like I showed um, my my kids and they were all like, oh, can you do that to my keyboard? I'm like, well, I can't just add a display. I mean, I could, but it's probably going to look a little, um, a little bit rigged up. So, um, but they all actually really liked uh, this keyboard and how it looked. But they really, 
liked that uh, that round display. This is the first keyboard that I have that has a round display on it. And I was like, well, what's the best thing to put in there? It would be an eyeball. Uh, maybe I've just got a twisted sense of humor, but I think it's pretty funny because while you're typing, uh, what's... Well, something looking at me. Now, it does have uh, some controls here. Um, you got your volume, and if you press, then you can go into your modes. Uh, so, the first time that I plugged it in, it was in Bluetooth mode. So, I actually, I actually had to select USB mode for it to go into wired mode. Uh, the home does give you uh, your home screen, which is this, which basically has all of the icons available there uh, with the RK logo, uh, how much you have in your battery. Now, when you plug it in and upload an image, it will update the time and date to the right time, but there is no way to set a 12 or 24 hour. So it's always gonna be military time or 24 hour clock, um, which for most, it's not a problem, but people in the US, us folks in the U.S., we got two 12s, not 24 hours in a day. <laughs> anyway, um, but it has, what I find funny is that it has kind of like two, well, almost three home screens. Well, two home screens. Because you press it, and then you go back to home. You can select that home screen that we were on. You can select just a clock, which shows an analog uh, wristwatch clock with even the second indicator, which I could see some people actually liking that as well. It's like setting, I worked with several people that they'd get to work and they'd take off their watch and they'd set it on their desk, either next to their keyboard or next, next to their desk map so that they could look over, even though the computer in front of them has the clock down in the corner. Some people just are used to um, looking at an analog watch. So I thought that was a, pretty neat that's probably where the second um because most of these have the memory for two dis uh, two animation that's probably taken one of the animation spaces now we also have time which goes into this so it's a digital display and it really only gives you the battery readout the time again in military time along with the date in what i feel is the proper format year bigger month next biggest day smallest um it even tells you the day of the week which is pretty cool but and then you can go to that same screen again and choose the gif um but you can actually uh do the colors the uh, change the different effects on the keyboard um it actually gives you pretty good control. Uh, the only thing you can't do is obviously remapping. You will have to do, you will have to use the software for that, but thankfully it stores it on the keyboard. So there's not a problem. Um, you can program it. Well, for me, since I use Linux, I program it in Windows. Um, even though the Windows did give me, uh, you know, we don't trust this program. RK, you really should get yourself Windows certified, but I did run it through virus scan and nothing came up, no malware, no Trojans, nothing like that. So if you do get that error message pop up, uh, you I mean, you could check it for yourself. And I, I really, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to discount people on YouTube, but you know, don't believe everything you see on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, just because I say it, I want for you to check it as well. Even if I give a piece of advice, it's probably good for you to do it yourself just so that you get in the habit of it. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, as a low profile keyboard, I've got to say, I actually like this. I, I'm using right now uh, the Air 75, the version one um, from Nufi as my portable keyboard. But as soon as I'm done with everything with this keyboard, it is going in my laptop bag. Um, because this is, uh, I gotta, I gotta see, I will probably, I think it might fit just fine. I'll have to pull out my laptop to see, but I think it should fit, um, just fine, um, to where I can actually place it over the keyboard without it pre pressing on any keys and being able to use it there and still have access to the trackpad below. I'll have to see about that, but I think that this keyboard is now taken the place um, of my air, my new fee air. 
because I like this. I like the screen. I like the features, um, the software. It's like I said, it's no via, but it does give you a lot of functionality. And I, for the most part, except if I'm working with 40% or really small keyboards, I really only need the top layer and a function layer. And it gives me that. And I actually program some tap keys in here. So I personally, I'm, I'm quite pleased. And like I said, I, I do run a lot of keyboards uh, and show them to my kids, sometimes just my wife, sometimes to my kids, whoever I run into when I'm walking around the house with a keyboard. Yes, me walking around the house. Keyboard, keyboard, I have a keyboard. But I do like to get my family's opinion. Um, if nothing else, just to make sure that, you know, I'm not like really off base somewhere and they point out something extremely, you know, obvious that I may have been missing. But for the most part, um, I like to get their input on, you know, what do you think of this keyboard? Sometimes they just look meh, and they walk on. Sometimes they're like, oh, they grab it. And if they start typing on it and grab it out of my hands and put it down on a table or flat surface and start playing with it, then I know they like it. Um, but sometimes they'll just look at it and, and just keep on walking. So it's kind of it's kind of my my meter to make sure that okay, we're on the same page. I'm not way off base here. So um, they definitely liked that they loved the eyeball. They were like, I mean. Uh, two, two of my kids were like, can you do this to my keyboard or, or can I just get this? And I'm like, this one's mine. I, I, I guess I'll have to buy you guys one. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> so it looks like I may be getting another one. My daughter saw it that came in the red and she was like, ah, that one. I do got to say though, I just noticed this has a caps lock indicator. And it has a Windows Mac indicator. And I mean, you can select mode here. It's called Layout. Let me see if I switch over to Mac. All right, so the Mac turns on. But if I switch back over to Windows. No Windows light comes on. So, and because the uh, the normal home actually shows what mode I'm in, I, I kind of see that as a little redundant. Um, but it should at least be turned on because I'm in Windows mode. So, I'll shoot that up the ladder to the RK and see if maybe they can uh, uh, do a firmware update to take care of that. Because, I mean, it's kind of it's like if I'm not in Windows and I'm not in Mac, what mode am I in? I'm in no mode at all. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test. And like I said, if if this has just been released, it should be done with a giveaway over on Budget Keeps. And I'll put um, links down in the description below as long as the giveaway is running um, for Rosewood and this one, which is Sandy Gray, I believe. Um, so a couple lucky people will get to s test out this keyboard, get one for themselves. Um, <laughs> no, my kids are like, well, I'm on Reddit. Can I join? And I'm like, I don't think that's kind of fair, but, um, probably have to be 18 anyway. So uh, I'm going to make sure to hide the link from them and just have to buy them their own. Anyway, um, <clears throat> like I said, after I finished production, on this video, this is going in my laptop bag. I am, I, I'm just pleasantly surprised. I know that I said that it had a PC plate. I'm mistaking this for another keyboard, but it is a top mount and maybe that's why it has, like I said, I, there's a little bit of softness that it has to it. It doesn't feel like a steel tray, a tray mount and steel plate because it's not, it's a top mount. So it somehow or another, they've gotten that to be loose enough to to have a nice uh, just a little bit of give just enough give to where 
it's not so harsh when you're bottoming out, especially because you have, you know, half the travel that you normally would. So anyway, I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. I do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. A thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, just drop in a comment to say hi. All of those things help with the YouTube algorithm, and it's greatly appreciated by yours truly. But my fellow humans, for now, I must bid you adieu. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.